nothing greater than God's presence? Oh, it's the worship that gets you places in the Spirit. Amen? You know, some people's thoughts, oh, man, I don't know how much longer I'm going to worship. That squirminess is a demon in you. Hello? That's the demon in you. And until you realize that you got demons, they need to get removed. Amen? Because they're the ones that prevent you from getting God's presence. No, those are my thoughts. That's just me. No, those are the demons in you. Amen? We all need to go through deliverance on a daily basis. Why don't you lift your hands? I don't feel like it. That's the demon. Hello? You're not fighting flesh and blood. The Word of God tells us that. We are fighting powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places, demons, disembodied spirits that want to influence you. And if you allow them to influence you into simple things, what do you think they're going to do with the larger things? Amen? Glory to God. Turn to Revelation 12, verse 7. And war broke out where? In the heavenlies, in the unseen realm. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. So the dragon has angels, doesn't he? Amen. He's got a third of them. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the dragon was cast out, the serpent of old. Remember, they're all the same. Called the devil, called Satan, called Lucifer, who deceives the whole world. Who deceives the whole world. Think about it. Now, you gotta, I want you to grab hold of something. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Darkness is the core of deception. I want to say it with me. Darkness is the core of deception. It keeps the world in darkness. Look at if you're dark, you're blinded to the light. You can't see the light. You don't know the truth. Amen? But there are creatures that live in the dark, amen, and see in the dark. They live in the dark. When you and I came into this world, we were born in darkness. We lived in darkness. We saw in darkness. We comprehended darkness. We served darkness. But we are under the great deception. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. And this darkness, which is the core of deception, it keeps the world in darkness, in blindness to the light of the truth. The Lord removed Lucifer, the powers of darkness, from the heavenly position. They had a, Lucifer had a heavenly position with God. He removed them from that position into the second heaven and the world. Now, the Word of God is three-dimensional, past, present, and future. Amen? I'm going to share that when this, was, when this event happened, it was before the creation of man. Does everybody understand that? Because the angels used to rule on the earth. Amen? So, l let's go a little bit deeper on this. Let's go to Isaiah 14. You know, the prophets prophesied the things that were past, present, and future. Many times they didn't even know what they were talking about. They just prophesied it because the Spirit of the Lord came upon them. In verse 12, what does it say? How you are fallen from heaven. We just spoke about that, didn't we? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. <laughs> I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most God. 
this is the Lord's response. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, This is the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities, who did not open the house of his prisoners. And all the kings of the nations, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house, but you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like a garment of those who are slain, thrust through with a sword, who go down to the stones of the pit like a score, like a corpse trotting underfoot. You will not be joined with them in burial because you have destroyed your land. What land? The earth. This is what he's trying to do now. Does everybody understand? And slay your people. Have people been, have people dying from all of this uh, viruses and medications and stuff? The broad of evildoers shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children. I'm going to explain all this. Because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the face of the earth with their cities again. Lucifer, the devil, dragon, Satan, ex-praise and worship leader of the universe for God, was removed because of his desire to be better than his creator. It's called pride. Pride. Pride blinds. Pride blinds. It brings darkness. Pride is a great tool of deception. Pride. Pride is darkness and blindness. Darkness is the core of deception. God began, uh, begun the dismantlement of deception and the elimination of its offsprings already. This is where we are now. How's he going to eliminate their offsprings? Well, they're going to die. They're going to be executed, and they're going to be put in prison. It's that simple. Everybody get it? This is what's happening now. Let's go to Ezekiel 28, verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Who was the king of Tyre? Who is he referring to? He's referring to Lucifer as a king. It says, You are the seal of perfection. Well, there's been no man a seal of perfection except for Jesus. Amen? So this means that this is not a human state. This is a spiritual state. Look at you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden in the Garden of God. Was Lucifer in the Eden of Garden of God? Yes. Every precious stone was your covering. The, to the sardius, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. Why? Because Lucifer was there when the Lord created the earth. Lucifer was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He wore these garments. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were what? Created. No man was created with timbrels and pipes. You were the anointed cherub. Hello, that's not a human. Who covers, who covers what? The universe with praise. I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God. The, the earth was known as the holy mountain of God. You walk back and forth in the midst of its fiery stones, and that's creation. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. That was called pride and darkness. Verse 16. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you. Now, we know that this is, hasn't happened. In other words, he destroyed his authority. He destroyed his position. I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground and lay you before kings that they may gaze at you. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Trading. Sounds like a lot of corruption, huh? Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you. I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the, play, uh, among the peoples are astonished at you. You have become a whore and shall be no more 
forever and ever. Lucifer's created position in God, and he was removed. He was totally removed. You know, all of this is coming to the end. These wo prophetic words and prophetic insights is coming to pass. But we've got to understand something about what's going on here. Because we're not fighting flesh and blood. The core of deception is darkness. In Genesis 2, in verse 15, Then the Lord God took the man he created and put him in the garden of Eden to tend it and keep it. In other words, he put him in there to be trained. Amen? The new living being, God put in a place of training to, so he could learn and prepare him. Hallelujah. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of the tree of the garden, you, of every tree you can eat freely. Don't have a problem with it. But of the special tree, there's a tree there that you cannot partake of. It's called good and evil. It has knowledge of good and evil. But it literally is a tree of deception, and its core is darkness. Don't partake of it. You'll become blinded again. You'll walk in darkness. You won't see light. The Lord God, because he said to him, for in the day that you eat of it or partake of it, you shall what? die. And the Lord God said, it is not good for that man should be alone, and I will make him a helper compatible to him. Again, he put him in a location so he could train him, so he could learn, and God was preparing him. He was commanded to be obedient to the Lord's commands. Amen? Even during the distractions. Even during distractions. He was learning to resist darkness or deception. The Lord said, do not partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because it is deceptive and its core is darkness. If your obedience to him, to the Lord, will keep you from participating with that, if you are obedient to his word, amen, if you're obedient to his command. See, God, the Bible says God chastens those he loves. Why? To redirect them. To bring counsel, correction, and direction. Amen? Because, see, people, even though that they're believers, still partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and find themselves in the mixture of deception and truth. One day they're up, one day they're down. They're emotionally all over the place. Oh, I feel they let emotions dictate their choices of worship. They let emotions dictate everything in their life. Because they're still partake, partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They've not resisted it fully. Hallelujah. John chapter 8, verse 37. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, says the Lord, but you seek to kill me. Because my word is not, has no place in you. Whoa. I speak what I have seen with my father. You speak what you have seen with your father. <laughs> they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said to him, if Abraham, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication, we have one Father, God. Were they deceived? Okay, if they're deceived, are they in darkness? Yeah. Jesus said to him, if God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your Father, the what? Devil here, the offsprings are. 
and the desires of your ha father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not, you do, you, you do not hear because you are what? Not of God. They, they lived and walked in deception. They've been in darkness. They were unable to see the light and understand the truth. They are partakers of the deceptive words of the tree of the good and evil. That's what we call deceptive food. Amen? And what did it do? It kept them in darkness, even though they thought they were free. I'll never forget, I thought I was free when I left home. I'm free. I can go do all the dope I want, man. Praise God. I can drink as much as I want. I can do this. I can do that. I can do that. Man, I'm free, 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 and free, and free. But I was more bound than I ever was. Didn't realize it. Had to go through hell to get through heaven. Get to heaven. Went through a lot of disappointments. Amen? See, but they were not able to eat of the tree of life or the tree of light known as truth and righteousness because they were too prideful. They were still relying on their own understanding, their self-righteousness. I'm all right. I can do it myself. I don't need Jesus. Right. Isaiah 60, in verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Who is the light? Jesus. Your light has come. Amen. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Has it covered the earth? Yeah. And deep darkness, the people. Well, that means they're a great deception. Amen. Amen. But the Lord will rise over you. Now, it's not going to just happen to everyone. You must be a seeker. Amen? He's not going to come over somebody just to come over somebody. You must be a seeker. You must desire this. You must desire a new life to get it. Or you don't get it. His glory will be seen upon you, and the Gentiles will come to your light. And the king's to the brightness of your rising. Your light has come, Jesus. Darkness, the core of deception over the whole earth, and, whole earth and great deception over people. They are deceived. They are living in darkness, but they don't know it. And they continue to partake of the tree of knowledge of evil, good and evil. And so if they're still partaking, darkness is not only behind them, but they're always setting a path of deception and darkness before them all the time. Hallelujah. In John chapter 3, 18. He who what? What's the word believe me? Follow. He who follows him is not condemned, but he who does not follow him is condemned already. Wow. Because he has not believed or followed in the name of the only begotten of the Son. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light. Listen, B.C., I loved darkness rather than light. In fact, I was up most of the darkness. When the light came on, I was usually back in bed. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light. See, if you're a practice of evil, you hate the light. You can't stand God's presence. You can't stand the worship. You don't want to. You ain't going to. Because you what? You love darkness and evil rather than do light and truth. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light. Lest his deeds should be what? Exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light 
that his deeds may be clearly seen, and that they have been done in God. Men love darkness rather than light. They were partakers of the tree of the good and evil. Deceptive words, rituals, desires of great manipulation. Wow. How many of y'all know that emotions can really manipulate you? Amen. Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 2. That's one of the ploys of the enemy in the area of darkness and deception. I think, you know, one of its weapons is those emotional desires and desires and desires and desires, you know. We know that lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life is the weapons of the enemy, you know. But, but in that, the, when people fall into that deception and they agree with those things, that opens the door to more darkness. Amen? And the enemy manipulates. I mean, it talks about bribery. Amen? Look at how many people sold their souls out for money and fame. They've been bribed to live a life in darkness and great deception. Amen? Some of you have kids. They try to bribe you, I'm sure. <laughs> when they want what they want. Amen? <laughs> they'll tell you they'll do things and then they won't do it after you pay them already. I have one of those. <laughs> Silly flesh creature. But one day, <laughs> freedom's coming. But in the meantime, we have to be wiser than them. <laughs> and know that they're manipulators because they're living in darkness. Amen. In verse 4, would you read it with me? Second Peter chapter 2, verse 4. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes condemn them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly. If you're living ungodly, are you deceived? Yeah, you're in outer, dar you're in, in outer darkness, and you're living in blindness and darkness. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the world. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day, seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh or their emotions in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. But these, like br natural brute beasts, made to be caught and destroyed, speak of evil the things they do not understand. Why? Because they're in darkness. And will utterly perish in their own corruption. And will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who count it pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained to in covetous practices and are accursed children. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Barah, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey, speaking with a man's voice, restrained the madness of the prophet. Some people need to have a donkey come up to them and speak to them, I guess. These are wells without water, clouds carried away by tempests, for the whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. These are partakers of the good and evil tree of fruits so of the darkness and deception, manipulated by emotional desires, not able to reach the portal of salvation. 
They're not able to reach the portal of salvation's light. Unwilling to participate or cooperate with the rescue. And they serve the blackness of darkness. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Oh, the world is about to change. One of the great tools of, of, of darkness is artificial intelligence. AI. Try and get your kids away from the phone. They'll shoot you. Try and get them away from their music. They'll shoot you. <laughs> They're addicted to artificial intelligence. It is a portal of great deception. I'm not saying it can't be used for good. But unfortunately, you've got both things there because that artificial intelligence is good and evil. It's from that tree. It's from that portal. Does everybody understand? It's not until the righteous get a hold of it and turn it to their way. Amen? Because it promotes much deception. Look at the media. Look at everything that's come, come forth. But its source... It's from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's evil. It was created by DARPA, which is an evil organization. Oh, hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 10. Let's speak it. But you have carefully followed my doctrine. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me in at Antioch, at Losium, Icium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord, what? Delivered me. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned, been assured of, and knowing from whom you have learned them. In other words, knowing the source, we've learned things. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for re correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Why? To resist the deceptions and temptations of darkness. The core of deception is darkness. Amen? Evil people and impostors will grow worse without divine intervention of the words of Christ. And Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love your law, which is his word. It is my meditation all day. In other words, I focus on it. You, through your commandments, made me wiser than my enemies. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than my teachers. For your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. I have restrained my feet from e every evil way that I may keep your word. In other words, he's resisting the deception of darkness because of the words of God, which are light. I have not departed from your judgment. For you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through you, through your precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Look at the next verse. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. That's light, isn't it? And a light to my what? Path. Words 
His words are lamps to feet, light to path. The Bible is a book of light. As do those who do not read it and speak the words of light, strain to the core of deception called darkness. This must be a continuous thing. It's not something that you just do once. You must refresh yourself, renew yourself every day in God's word. Amen? Ephesians 5, so if, I, if somebody tells me they're a believer but they don't read the Bible, then they're a liar. Well, I don't believe in the Bible. You're, then you're deceived and you're in darkness. Why? Because you're not speaking light. You're not speaking light to lead you out of darkness. You're still in darkness. Well, I accepted Jesus years ago. Then why are you still acting like, acting like an idiot, a heathen, still doing the things that displease God? You're lost, living outside of salvation's truth. You're either living inside of salvation's truth or outside of salvation's truth, one or the other. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also loved us, for given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you. Whoa, -ho, here we go again. With what? Empty words. Empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. In other words, anything associated with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen? But rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of these things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever m makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you work circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. In other words, the days are darkness. Amen? We were once darkness, now light. We got to maintain course, trust the promises, and expose darkness, resist deceptive foods of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to maintain course. It's that simple. The core of deception is darkness. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 7, Hallelujah. Little children, let no one what? Deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was what? Manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why Jesus came, to bring what? Light and life. This is not some religious thing. It's a military operation from God Almighty. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for he who his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been what? born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Wow. And I'm going to close at uh, 1 John chapter 2. In verse 20. He says, I've not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He's an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. 
If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have, not, I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. If the anointing that you have received in him abides in you. <laughs> Amen. You do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. And just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. And now little children abide in him. That when he appears, we may be confident. And not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. And this is where you do a self-examination. But again, we've got to get an understanding that this deception in it is the core of darkness. People are still in darkness. And they're still partaking of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Proclaiming that they're good. Not righteous. There's a difference. Amen? You can only have life if you partake of life. And what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your mercies and grace. We ask that you seal your word today in our spirit, in our soul, and in our mind and protect it from the enemy stealing it and let it participate in every part of our being and all of our members bringing it to remembrance so we are ready to resist any kind of deception and not fall or stray into darkness in Jesus name everybody said amen praise be to God